Yes, sir. absolutely. Okay, okay, yes. Thank you, Dinesh. Yeah, so good to know that uh, you're connected and um, we will get into today's uh, um, content. Uh, but before that, I, I just thought that, you know, we could um, briefly talk about the assignment. I posted the assignment for the Google Classroom students. Uh, I hope you have accessed it. Anybody, uh, are you still having problems accessing it? Okay, uh, so no one so far has issues. But if you do, please post it on the screen page. Uh, we'll, uh, I'll try and rectify it right away. Uh, I think now it's accessible, so uh, should be all right. Uh, and the due date for submission, uh, I think it is, I don't know, uh, maybe 17th, I've said, or 23rd. But uh, have a look at it. So by the end of the day, IST, you know, 12 midnight uh, uh, India Standard Time, you could uh, uh, send your submissions. Once submitted, so I think it allows you to keep working on the Google form uh, as much as you'd like. But once you hit the submit button, you cannot make changes. So please do not hit the submit button if you're not satisfied. If you're satisfied, then yes, please uh, fill it out and then hit the submit button. So that would, uh, uh, you know, that, that would be some instructions for the ass first assignment. Um, and uh, just to make things simpler and easier uh, for us, uh, we will just have two assignments. Uh, one has already been posted. This, this is for 50 marks and another one uh, towards uh, the end of the course for another 50 marks. Okay. Uh, Salome, you, uh, you had some problem. Is it resolved? Okay, uh, do let me know, Salome, maybe, okay, it's resolved. Okay, great, great, because I saw your message. Okay, submitted, wonderful. Okay, excellent. Okay, so let's uh, uh, pray and we will uh, get started. I would like to request uh, anyone from our class to please lead us in a word of prayer, please. Harrison, would you be willing to pray? Yes. Yeah, yes, please go ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Thank you for another opportunity. Thank you for another day to study your word. And I thank you for all my fellow students and I thank you for Pastor. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you open our, our ears and our mind to receive what the Lord has had for us today. I pray, Father, that at the end of this session, that we'll have more reason to God to serve you better. Holy Spirit divine, teach us, reveal Jesus to us as we study his word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, thank you. Thank you, Harrison. Yes. So um, with that, we'll get into our lesson. And we've been talking about building people by the spirit. So uh, we basically talked about the fact that in the kingdom of God, we invest in the lives of others. Um, and we were looking at some of the practical ways in which we uh, must invest in people's lives. You know, the uh, fact that we must understand their destiny, position them. Uh, in the manner that God wants them uh, to be positioned. And then uh, the way we interact with them. So we were at, at that, we were talking about our interactions with the people whom we are building. So uh, we said that you know, we must nurture people life to life uh, so they can learn from our lives. And then you know, we uh, touched upon the fact that we must avoid insecurities I'm on page 68 for those of us who are wondering where we are. So avoid insecurities as leaders, avoid jealousy, okay, uh, avoid being overprotective. So I think this is where uh, we, we kind of stopped. Uh, and we said that Paul was very zealous for the believers uh, because he had invested 
and he had served the believers for their spiritual maturity and he did not want any wrong doctrine or uh, any false prophet to lead them astray so in that way he was zealous for the believers and he could not take it uh, when the you know any any kind of a wrong um suggestion was made to the people you know i i gave the example of when the galatians were moving towards laws you know after having learned about grace paul was very upset about it but at the same time you know we notice that there is a balance he talks about how uh we don't have dominion over the faith of the people so the faith which people carry it's their own you know we are here to teach we are here to present the word of god we are here to um suggest to them you know when they need to make decisions but at the end of the day they are the ones exercising their own faith and they get to uh make their journey of growth so uh, we should not be overprotective or controlling of people and we've discussed this time and again Okay. so the next practical uh, thing for us to remember is that we must not be over involved and this essentially means that we equip people with the word we uh, share from the wisdom of god's word uh, and then let people make their own decisions because people grow when they make their own decisions so the way we build people up uh, should be um uh, a manner in which even if you're not in the scene they are able to survive on their own they are able to uh, take care of their own lives and continue to strengthen their spiritual walk uh, and all other aspects that concern them the next thing uh, practically for us to look at is that we must not be overly authoritative um and you know we've seen this again in scripture uh, peter uh, he writes first peter chapter 5 verses 1 through 4 where he see, he says that um we must lead as examples to the flock and not lord over them not be lords of the people whom god has entrusted us so that's the way in which we uh, guide them so does that mean that we should completely let go of our authority no we are still using our authority but you know in a loving manner we we must use it and when do we strictly communicate with the uh, flock that god has entrusted us we'll come to a section where we look at that uh, in detail there are times when we have to bring correction and that might not be uh, uh, you know something that people will receive easily and yet a leader is called to do things like that so um authority at times can come forth in a strong and a strict way uh, but there is a time and a place to do that but in general even though we carry authority the manner in which we uh, lead the people must be one that is loving uh, and we must not lord over the people now moving forward another practical thing for us to bear in mind is to avoid emotional attachments now uh, it's true that you know you can't serve uh, someone or you can't mentor people without having some level of uh, you know emotional uh, engagement you want them to do well you want to see them grow in god so there is you know that investment but there is always a boundary which we must maintain overly um involving emotionally or attaching oneself emotionally to those who uh, those who are growing uh, in our care it can be counterproductive because you know the way god leads people is that after several seasons you know god may want to uh, send this person somewhere else so at that point if we are very emotionally attached to the people uh we we will find it difficult to let them go uh, so one example which is given here in our notes is the friendship of david and jonathan uh, it was a very special friendship but when it came time uh, to send david away you know, jonathan was willing to do it 
so uh, we should be careful about emotional boundaries that bringing correction when required so this is what you know i'm talking about uh, in terms of authority there is a place to correct people as well um in first corinthians chapter 4 verse 29 you know the the kind of language which paul uses it's it's very sharp uh, he says what do you want shall i come to you with a rod or in love and spirit of gentleness so uh, he wants to bring correction in a certain matter and what he is saying is that you know you better um, amend the wrong that is going on if you don't then i will have to come to you uh with a rebuke i will have to come to you with you know judgment uh, but if you correct yourself then i can come to you uh, with the spirit of love and gentleness so the so paul uh, did correct people he did um uh you know take responsibility whenever there there is a situation where one needs to um uh, speak the truth in love so we we see you know several instances of uh, paul uh, speaking this way there's another passage first corinthians 7 verses 11 through 12 uh, i think it'll be good if one of us can read it this is on page 71 kingdom builders first corinthians 7 verses 11 through 12 please anyone can you please read this can i read passage ah uh, yes yes please yes christopher Uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 11-12 For observe this very thing that you sorrowed in a godly manner. What diligence is produced, what diligence it produced in you, what clearing of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what vindication. In all things you prove yourself to be clear in this matter. therefore although i wrote to you i did not do it for the sake of him who had done the wrong no for the sake of him who suffered wrong but that our, that our care for you in the sight of god might appear to you okay yes thank you christopher so uh, there was a, a certain man in uh, the corinthian church who fell into sexual immorality and paul uh, brings very strict correction okay uh, uh, against this person to the extent that he kind of says he tells them like you put this person away till he is willing to uh, uh, amend his ways so he's just saying that look i had to do this for the sake of not just that individual or the individual who who got wrong in the process but this is for everybody i had to bring correction and that was the right thing to do so uh, even paul understood that he must not withdraw correction now whenever it comes to uh, correction uh, you know it's it's a very difficult thing for anyone and particularly for people who are leading uh, most people would want to avoid you no know, confrontation most people would want to keep uh, the relationship such that you no know, they push certain things under the carpet and just continue uh, you let's focus on on the easy uh, things let's focus on the matters where the mentee is doing well or the church is doing well uh, but when it comes to things of correction okay hopefully the person will mature on their own and we don't really have to so a lot of people try to avoid confrontation and it's understandable however this risk is important for us to take we must bring correction proverbs 27 verse 6 it says faithful are the wounds of a friend but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful so that shows us that though correction is hard to bring and very very hard to receive uh, correction will do good to an individual now correction of course can be brought in a loving manner uh, and when we do it what happens is we are helping that person resolve an issue in their character in their lifestyle uh, and in the long term 
you know, it, it will prevent them from making huge mistakes or, you know, kind of, it could even prevent them from destroying their own lives, right? So uh, it's doing good to an individual at the end of the day. So no matter how hard and difficult it is, uh, we must take the courage. We must take the risk of bringing correction, but bring it in a loving manner. And sometimes what happens is uh, when we come to know something, right, we cannot delay the correction. Because if we delay the correction, then, you know, damage is already done. So when you come to know that something is going on and this individual or this, this group uh, needs to hear the truth from God's word and they must stop what they're doing, we have to kind of jump in almost immediately and get it sorted. Otherwise, you know, things like, I'll just give you an example. Suppose you know, somebody's spreading gossip uh, about other believers and you're working with this person and you know that they are getting things like this then you must immediately call up call uh, upon them and say hey can we can we have a discussion what's going on this is what i heard could you please explain yourself and if uh, at all you know we find something wrong there then we must uh, uh, you know instruct them from god's word and say look this is not right you must stop doing it right away uh, you need to apologize to x y and z because if we don't do it then what happens you know, something like gossip it'll spread. And before you know it, you know, it's, it's spread through uh, three-fourths of the congregation and it's damaging people because of one individual who's engaging in things like this. So when we come to know that something is wrong, sometimes we have, we cannot even wait. Like you can't even wait overnight. You have to kind of jump in right away and bring correction to the individual. So don't delay in bringing correction. So once uh, we bring correction, we must allow the individual to respond in a manner, um, you know, give them the liberty to respond. However, they, they um, are processing this correction. Now, obviously, uh, you know, we do our best to communicate in the gentlest possible manner. Uh, and uh, we always bear in mind that correction should edify the individual and not destroy them. And once we bring that word of correction, uh, we must also remember not to keep bringing it up over and over again. You know? uh, otherwise, what are we doing? We are damaging. We're damaging that relationship in the long run. You know, let's say we've given somebody a responsibility and that person uh, didn't do things well. They didn't treat uh, the people on their team well. And it happened once we brought correction. Now the person is engaged in another work. Uh, and, you know, if we keep bringing it up and saying, oh, you, you don't know how to talk to people. This is how you, you've done it in the past. What happens? We, we're actually destroying the person and not really building the person up. So correction is meant to edify the individual or God's people and not to destroy them. And with that heart, when we bring correction, it will do its work in the person's life. Now, uh, yeah, we when we communicate, uh, when we bring about correction, uh, it's a, again, it's really difficult to communicate well because we can come from a place of feeling upset, feeling angry, um, you know, feeling uh, agitated. And when we're communicating, we can kind of let all those emotions show. So the person who's receiving correction, uh, they may not respond rightly when we bring it up in this manner. However, if we let the Holy Spirit work in us and we flow with the spirit of gentleness, kindness, goodness, uh, and communicate things in a good way, then you know, hopefully the person who is listening to us is in a better position to receive that word of correction. Now, in the approach that Paul had, and also some of the other uh, apostles, we noticed that they use a term called beseech. Okay? I beseech you, brethren. Now, in comparison to a term such as command, beseech is used, you know, way, uh, uh, you know, many, it's used several times comparatively. So, in fact, there are 24 references for the word beseech. 
And I think for the word command, don't have the number here, but uh, it's, uh, you know, fewer, um, very few times where the word command is used. So what does this term besiege mean? So besiege means to call someone near, to exhort them. Okay? Exhort means encourage them, to entreat them, to invite them. So I beseech you, brethren, you know, like uh, I'm inviting you to look at this situation and, and let you know that it's not good for you. And so, you know, make a change uh, in the uh, current scenario. So that's how we invite people in a gentle way, even for correction. Uh, however, command comes across in a stronger way, where we say things like, you know, I command you. Uh, and uh, uh, Paul did instruct, you know, uh, people like Timothy. He told them, you know, there are times when we must command and teach. Uh, 1 Timothy 4.11, he tells them, uh, command and teach. Okay, so command is to kind of just put it out there and say, this is it. Okay, you have to do it. it. It's like the Great Commission. You don't, we don't try to change it. We receive it as it has been spoken. So there were times when Paul and the other leaders, they commanded people. Uh, uh, and, you know, you, we find uh, passages where Paul says, I charge you, I charge you, brethren. So uh, apparently command was used only four times. So, you know, we can say that uh, it was used very sparingly. So when you're working with people, even when we bring about correction, uh, it's good to beseech them rather than authoritatively command them because uh, then we are ministering with the spirit of gentleness. So now, once we have spoken the word of correction, uh, what can we expect from people? Okay, so I just leave it open. Uh, maybe uh, we can get some responses. When we bring correction, or some of you I know, you are serving as elders, leaders. Uh, what kind of responses do you see? If you're comfortable to share. <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. Um, so basically, uh, some people show a sign of remorse, and then some people rebel. <laughs> some people um, make a U turn, basically. They repent and then they change their ways. So it varies across board according to how they perceive and take it. Sometimes you mean well. Well, sometimes it depends on the level of maturity or perspective from which they see your correction. So it varies across board when we when people receive correction. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, and uh, Kennedy adds fear. Uh, sometimes people can be fearful when you bring about correction. Uh, yeah, that's true as well. Division and regrouping. Okay, fine. So they uh, might want to, uh, you know, whatever, create some form of division in the church. So uh, these are these are mostly what we have listed is negative responses. And in fact, say you completed my next section. I'm wondering if I should even teach. So uh, yeah, those are all the forms of uh, responses that we get. We could either get a mature response. A mature response is one where the individual is willing to uh, consider what has been spoken. Uh, the person is willing to look at their own lives uh, and you know, kind of assess that and see, OK, where did I make a mistake? Why is pastor telling me this? Or why is my, my uh, team leader telling me this? Uh, fine, let me see how I can change. Right? So that would be a mature response. But there can be a, a range of immature responses as well uh, that people uh, you, you know, present. So these negative responses right, from the people whom we love. See, first of all, bringing correction is a hard thing. Uh, we all would like to avoid it. But after having done that, 
when we receive negative responses from the people whom we love and we are talking about building people by the spirit our, our motivation is to edify them now with all that when people kind of um, don't receive the correction it's very painful for a leader uh, but you know what to do we have to go through this process so what are some of the immature responses that uh, people present with the first one could be complaining right so uh, once we bring about the correction till we bring about the correction uh, they might view the leader or the pastor or whoever it is as um, uh, somebody whom they respect and you know they put them on a pedestal and all of that but once uh, the correction is brought about you know they they might look at the the leader very differently and they might want to complain and say no 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 the pastor you know the sermon uh, the outline is not that good you know the, the, the practical application points were not relevant like suddenly uh, there'll be a completely different way of looking at things right maybe the church looked bright and wonderful every sunday as they walked in but suddenly they start noticing oh the paint is not um, you know kind of uh, good enough they chose the wrong paint for the hall all kinds of things uh, start seeming wrong for the individual and they may also start questioning some of the decisions that the leader has made in the past and just be complaining you know resurrect uh, you know, smaller uh, issues and make them big issues so the thing is they feeling hurt and they don't know how to uh, resolve the matter so one of the ways in which uh, they are showing their hurt is by complaining against the person who brought the correction and the the thing is they are perceiving that the correction was brought to put them down which is not true uh, but you know that is the perception of the individual so that is one way people can start complaining about us the second thing is withdrawal okay. withdrawal means uh, they don't connect as much um, in terms of you know communication or uh, uh, attending programs maybe somebody was showing up for every church program but now that you uh, talked about uh, an issue that they must uh, correct in themselves they don't show up okay or they come really late and they've kind of gone into a shell and every time you're interacting with this individual you feel like you're walking on eggshells you know i don't want to uh, kind of uh, uh, you know create any any discomfort i don't want to hurt the person so i have to be very careful in what i say how i even look at them if i uh, you know i i should not miss shaking hands with this person what if they feel bad if they feel more hurt so basically you know you're very careful about the way you're interacting with this person because they are beginning to withdraw uh, from you and also spiritually right when uh, we are continuing to invest in their life spiritually they may not be in a position to receive they have their guards up they have their walls up and they're like okay i don't want to listen to this person anymore so withdrawal can happen uh, the third form of uh, immature response is retaliation okay uh, retaliation is um, like becoming a opposer of the same person uh, who you know this individual appreciated once so it's it's a form of rebellion right why because uh, they are probably disappointed and they are dissatisfied uh, with the way this relationship has gone they thought that oh uh, everything is fine with me and you know how is it that this this elder or this pastor is calling me out on these matters so they can become very angry and they can retaliate okay uh, so that also might happen so as a pastor and as a leader you know uh, uh, the expressions of retaliation uh, might be hard for us to take but uh, you know like they might speak up against uh, the leader Mm. and you or the whole time you're wondering hey you know we it, it's so solvable why can't we just have a conversation and uh, resolve the issue uh, of concern rather than you bringing it up in all these other ways and you know opposing me so retaliation is something that can happen uh, or departure okay this is again very unfortunate uh, once we bring correction suddenly that individual is no longer 
around in the program when you're wondering what happened uh, so and so was attending a church for 8 months now no way to be seen you know people might be so hurt that they pack up their bags and they want to move on to another uh, church setting where they will be appreciated i don't want anybody to point out mistakes or uh, you know negative things in them so maybe even in that church for a while they can enjoy the the pampering of everyone before the issues resurface again the issues that were not dealt with uh, but yeah, when it comes to their uh, relationship with us they have decided they they want to leave right so departure is also something that can happen so it's hard you know every single one of these immature response responses is really hard for a leader to take but you know we can't help it because uh, people are uh, everyone has the freedom to decide what they want to do um, and how they want to uh, react and respond so how should a leader take these things the first practical instruction is to not take it personally okay as long as we have brought the correction with the right attitude we have um, you know spoken with love uh, and uh, gentleness and our motivation was to build the person up we are thinking about them in the long run okay if we continue with this habit of gossiping or whatever you know it will destroy their life it will destroy their family as well so we are bringing it with the right attitude after having done all that if they are responding negatively just don't take it personally because you could not have done anything else okay so don't take it personally take no offense uh, as well from what has happened you know sometimes for leaders uh, we are human as well right whoever is leading uh, people are human uh, and uh, we can take offense meaning that hurt of the the individual responding negatively can hurt us and if we are not mature enough we carry a hurt in within ourselves right and it shows in a uh, bias in the ministry that we do or with regard to this particular individual you know we can try to hurt them whenever we get an opportunity but the way we see the apostles deal with these things is you know, they encourage people not to take offense so Paul, uh, you know, he he writes in Galatians four verses eleven through twelve. He says, "I am afraid for you, lest I have laboured for you in vain, brethren. I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured me at all." So you know, you see that uh, it's a diff- some difficult situation that he's talking about, and uh, uh, you know, the responses that he expected from people was not um, uh, the. you know what whatever happened was not the way he expected things to go but at the end of it he's saying you have not injured me at all so he's trying not to carry an offense in his heart so that is uh, an example which we must follow okay so paul uh, gave us this uh, example of having a, a big heart okay and being magnanimous yeah, even if people offend us okay you didn't injure me i'm not going to carry an offense okay and uh, let's leave it at that and let's move forward so um you know that that is something and i've i've heard like whenever we've had some of these sessions um where uh, you know men i don't know what it's called but for volunteers we we've had sessions where we discuss these practical things so at one point the pastor was sharing about how um uh, whenever uh, there is a matter uh, about an individual Uh, like he tries not to say something about that person because that person is not there to defend themselves you know and i thought that's a great way uh, of um, dealing with people so you know uh, when you've been through difficult situations with uh, uh, people don't keep bringing it up like if you bring it up and that person is not there to defend themselves uh, then you know it it's not right it's not right so uh, try to forget you know the, the hard things uh, and heal our hearts from carrying the offense the way paul said you have not injured me at all it's come to a place where we kind of released it and let it go okay here's the next practical thing for us to uh, consider give people time to change now it's also possible that initially people have uh, an immature response 
but maybe they're taking some time to process what has just been told to them. Okay, and it's never easy. Even when somebody tells us something, it's never easy, right? For us to receive correction. So uh, give people time to deal with things. Then, um, and if at all, you know, people decide that they no longer want to continue uh, being with you, working with you, being part of the ministry, then it's fine you know, because people have made their decision and uh, uh, in, in an honorable way, peaceful way, we must be willing to release them uh, and uh, you know, let them go. Uh, and yeah, in, in continuing to, to serve people and individuals, uh, can be mindful to address all areas of their life um, to even bring correction if, if required because we've talked about the process of uh, maturity right and we said it's not just about the anointing anointing is important but the wine skin the character is very very important the maturity of individuals is crucial so uh, as pastors leaders elders we must address matters uh you know beyond beyond ministry so things like how they're managing their time and money so maybe you want to give them some advice uh, which will help them in the long run or how they're balancing their work how they're taking care of their health uh, are they getting enough time to rest or not because you know this, this is something very practical in ministry it happens people end up just you know, running, running, serving, serving, and they don't know how to take care of themselves. They don't even make time to rest. So uh, we, as leaders, want to address all these other areas that also matter, uh, you know, that, that uh, are a part of the individual uh, and keep bringing correction wherever necessary, bring, bring it in a loving manner, deal with character issues. Yeah. Uh, there's a section here that again goes into details about character issues, but I think we've uh, talked about this a whole lot. So I would not want to uh, get into this once again. But uh, I think one point here it says deal with heart issues. Uh, now, people can come with issues such as rejection or you know insecurity, emotional hurts, um, some sort of an uh, inward rebellion. Okay, uh, outwardly. Uh, we might find them saying yes yes yeah let's do it let's do it but then internally you know there's that aggression and rebellion so these are all issues that a lot of us deal with uh, so while working with people when we identify there are unresolved emotional issues we can encourage the person and say look you know, i understand you're going through this you know, how about you know, we take time in god's word or take a break or something like that but just help them uh, to uh, wade through that and move on and come up higher uh, in uh, the matters of character. Yeah. And then, yeah, talking about building people by the spirit, here's the next uh, uh, thing for us to do, which is to release people uh, into their calling. And we've been talking about this, right? Uh, God may lead people through a journey. Uh, even with regard to their gifting, their calling, for example, um, you know, Paul and Barnabas, they were teachers in the church of Antioch till Acts 13 came about. And in Acts 13, when they're ministering to the Holy Spirit, uh, verse 2, God says, okay, set uh, apart for me Paul and Barnabas for the ministry that I have called them to do. So they move more into an apostolic kind of a role. Uh, where they're going to different regions, they're planting churches and things like that. So God has uh, a timing and, you know, God would call people uh, in a certain way. And as pastors and leaders, our role is one of a catalyst. So we are going by God's agenda. And when God says, hey, it's time for this person to go on to bigger things, we just bless them and we give them the liberty to uh, move forward. Then, uh, what else can we do? Now that you know somebody has moved on, uh, does it mean that our relationship with them ends? Not really. I mean, if they are the kind who uh, can still be in touch with us, then uh, we can continue to be 
a spiritual support to them in whichever way so maybe we share some resources or we pray for that individual or they can count on us when they're going through some issues they can call up and ask for um uh, you know godly counsel from us or whichever way we can support the person we can continue to do that and it really depends on whether they are able to communicate with us or not now coming to um those individuals uh who we have built up but maybe they have gone away from god they have completely left god for whatever reason uh, and uh, you know they they are living their own lives we are as leaders we are called to lovingly restore them okay they might have made mistakes they might have completely fallen but we have to uh, engage in restoring such an individual so there are some passages here in our notes as well galatians 6:1 where paul says brethren if a man is overtaken in any trespass you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness considering yourself lest you also be tempted so it is a responsibility of a leader to work on bringing restoration to individuals now it is possible that some have fallen away and they are unwilling to correct themselves they are unwilling to come back uh, to their journey of faith they have gone away from god basically okay so how do we deal with such people now paul had certain uh, individuals that he writes about uh, he says uh, demas has forsaken me second timothy 4:10 having loved this present world and has departed for thessalonica uh, crescens for galatia titus for dalmatia so uh, he does talk about some fellow workers who rejected him okay and who left him so there were people that he to encounter uh, and he talks about certain other individuals who shipwrecked their faith okay? um and it's kind of uh, it's not new it's not new even in the case of jesus you know you had a judas who went away from the teachings of jesus and he made a shipwreck of his faith and he completely you know dissociated himself uh, with jesus and the ministry and everything but his end was uh, a very difficult end and what else did he do he opposed the ministry that god had for uh, jesus so in the same way it's possible that there are people who can who are a part of uh, the journey but at some point because of the offense that they're carrying in their hearts they can become our opposition as well so uh, we do our best to restore them but but if they don't come back then you know what we see uh, people like paul and all do is to kind of just let them be right let them be so paul talks about another person alexander he writes to timothy and he says alexander the coppersmith did me much harm may the lord repay him according to his works you also must be aware of him for he has greatly resisted our words so uh, paul goes from a place of restoring such an individual to uh, letting the people know so if he's come to a place where now he has to talk about this rebellious individual to warn others okay uh, so it's unfortunate but uh, if, if somebody has fallen away and they are unwilling to come back uh, unwilling to make restitution then uh, you know there's nothing much that can be done so that's about correcting people which is very much a part of building people by the spirit so at this point you know i'm just going to uh, give us some time if you have questions or um, you know some kind of comments from your own experience that you've been through uh equipping people in this manner yeah feel free you can share with us we can all learn from it so I'll just leave this time open Hello, ma'am. I want to share something. 
Yes, yes, Alison. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, there's a situation presently in my church that, you know, I and some group of persons you know, have been able to take it up, you know, to see how we bring um, peace in the, in the local assembly, you know, where the head pastor seemed to be having issues with his ministers. And we felt that, okay, we cannot see the head pastor having issues you know, with, with his ministers and at the same time lead the church. So there's a need you know, for him to come in agreement you know, with his ministers and let love you know, flow amongst them. But it's just something that when you look at it, it's more like there's this um, hatred and there is this um, disunity amongst our leaders. And these are the same people that are leading us. And we kind of confronted him on um, this last Sunday, you know, for us to be able to get, you know, a better view or a better understanding of what is going on amongst the ministers. And from what he shared, you know, we could see his uh, point of view but at the same time, you know, we are still telling ourselves that, okay, in as much as things have happened, or all these things have happened, there's still need for us to forget, you know, what has happened and forge ahead. And just like you said, you know, there are some things, you know, you don't take to heart. No matter what it is, you just let go and keep moving. Because as far as the Christ Christendom is concerned, a lot of people will step on your toes and... You just have to see it, you know, as, you know, the suffering for Christ. So, you know, after, you know, after all said and done, you know, I think he was kind of, you know, still bent on the fact that, okay, he does not want to use this set of people. And what this means is that he has chosen some sets of people over these people. And when you look at, you know, the, the ranking, you know, in, in position, the ones, you know, he has brought in, you know, to be ahead of them, you know, are more like, you know, young ones who are just coming up. And it's kind of creating chaos. It's making people have, you know, this odd feeling. Why should you put, you know, this kind of person above this person when we really know that in as much as they've done one thing or the other, they still have that grace, you know, that, you know, surpasses, you know, the person that you have placed up, you know, you've placed on top of them. So in cases like this, you know, how do you really address it, you know, to see that, you know, peace is restored and the lost glory is also restored because we want to see that, okay, the people leading us are leading us are right, you know, and not, you know, having misunderstanding amongst themselves and at the same time leading us. You know, for me, it does not go down well with me. So it's a bit terrible, it's a bit, you know, embarrassing, you know, to really find yourself in such situations. You know, when you look up, you know, to such people, you know, for guidance and you not see this kind of um, misunderstanding, you, can't see, you not see this kind of situation amongst them. What's, what's your take on this, you know, what's your advice on this or what do you have to say concerning this kind of situation thank you yes thank you Alison. thank you for sharing the uh, situation that uh, is unfolding now uh, so whenever it comes to uh, leadership okay, and an accusation about the leadership uh, we read in first timothy paul writes to timothy first timothy 5 verse 19 do not receive an accusation against an elder, except from two or three witnesses. So, uh, we are told to honor those who are leaders over us, uh, and also especially, uh, particularly, you know, double honor for those who are serving uh, in the doctrine and you know, they, they're dealing with the word of God, they're teaching God's word to us. So uh, the Bible kind of, uh, you know, uh, tells us to be slow to accuse as somebody who is in a position of leadership. But at the same time, uh, we are told that if there are two or three witnesses, which is to say 
that the offense is confirmed it's not just one person who is, is uh, saying that something is wrong with the leader but there are two or you know three people or even more so th there are uh, quite a few people who know that this is a confirmed matter so when this is a confirmed matter we must deal with it in an honorable way okay that's what we are called to do now uh, uh, matthew I, i forget the reference where you know where uh, jesus said right like if you have an offense against a brother then you go speak to them uh, first uh, and if they don't listen then you take somebody with you so then we kind of do it we can do it in that manner uh, we can communicate with the pastor in a uh, in an informal uh, uh, in a nice way if you have that rapport with the pastor you can just go and share and say pastor i'm concerned this is bothering me uh, this is this this and i really wanted to bring this up but if you are unable to do that then i think uh, you know having someone who is close to the pastor and who the pastor uh, is open to such a person uh, can actually go and kind of speak to the pastor and bring up the issue and say you know this this is what is bothering you people they told me about this and i just wanted to share this with you and then kind of try to resolve from there that would be a nice way of doing things um so yeah as in, i think uh, in an honorable way uh, the matter should uh, one should attempt to resolve the matter because sometimes you know, what happens is that the leader may not be aware it could be because of their personality it could be uh, see if they are intentionally doing these things uh, that's a different uh, issue but if they are doing it out of ignorance at least they'll know when somebody tells them and if they have the right uh, heart they will be willing to make the changes required so attempt to uh, bring across this matter to the leader you know uh good way is what i would say okay so uh, uh does that make sense yeah it does make sense you know that's um that's what you know i kind of said you know when i was talking about the situation because we met him uh, last sunday yeah. to tell him you know what's going on what's bothering us yeah. and a lot of things you know were discussed mm -hmm. but he was like okay in as much as all these things has happened and you know he 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 want to like you know set things you know right he does not want to deal with you know this sets of people or give them you know a position that he's giving to some sets of people right now so he's saying that okay he does not have any problem with them but he still want to see how they don't get you know the kinds of role you know that they, are, they were playing before so it's more like you know he's demoting them and bringing up you know a new set of people and when i look at this set of people they are very young and fresh in ministry and why the ones that have been demoted you know have been have been in ministry almost all their lives and we're not talking about kids you know we're talking about some are elders and some are adults you know with family and children and when i look at the whole thing you know it's just a bit difficult you know for me to weigh and you know balance the situation and that's why i'm yeah. kind of you know skeptical about his decision you know on bringing this you know new sets of people and when you look at the new sets of people now people are not really conforming to the style you know they come up in ministry and because you know when you see someone that is just starting in ministry you cannot compare it you know, to someone that has been in ministry for a very long time so what they do you know to you that have been in a ministry for a very long time could be a childish thing so that's just you know the case right now and that's why I'm like you know trying to throw it up and see how one it can really come up you know with a strategy you know, to really combat this um, situation yeah sure sure harrison so uh yeah i think it would be good to try to understand why the pastor has done that and present you know your side of uh, uh, your concern 
in uh, that is a starting point because without that uh, it may not be okay for us to judge the action of the pastor he might have some reason why he has done that right and sometimes you know when we look at people who are leading uh, they are carrying a responsibility uh, and they are accountable okay, to god they are accountable to the people whom they serve uh, and they make certain decisions now for me to not be in their shoes and judge them uh, is not right so i i if if i feel like hey something some decision that this person is making is a concern i want to know why then what i would do is i would reach out to the person and say i'm really um, you know bothered by this uh, can you please tell me why you made this decision so to kind of go about it in that manner uh, and see why that person has made the decision because you know we're not in their shoes we don't see everything that they are seeing and why they are making that decision so uh, it, it's not like we can't judge before we uh, make the right move so i, I just want to add that but good that you know you, you are discussing and now you're trying to see why such a decision has been made and also present your concerns okay class i do understand we've gone way past time uh, uh, but uh, can and there is a question i see three hands raised uh, uh, can we take a break and come back would that be okay yeah yeah okay let's do that uh we are at 10:57 we can come back at 11:07 and then we will cut yeah thanks christopher we'll come back later